the first question for you because i am talking about the spss um i want to get the answer from this link only i request to all to parallel can open a separate tab and type slido.com and give the code h439 then immediately it asks to the same screen it visible to you this question screen kindly type the expansion of spss so very good one person is giving statistical package for social science we will see whether it is correct or not okay very good so lot of people are giving the answer very good so i got four responses yeah one person is given a correct answer only one person is giving the correct answer now two persons i think yeah two because the you are telling us a statistical package for social science it may correct a few years before but now the answer for this question is statistical product and service solution so please here after don't um, tell us a statistical package for social science sp is stands for abina correct exactly is abina is correct the sp is stands for because the ibm 9 years before the ibm um, why is that buying the sp is a software then after the they only lead this the entire thing uh, they change the names uh, sp is a so statistical package for social science into statistical product and service solution this is the abbreviation of spss hopefully sometimes maybe comes to the net examination also so don't forget the word statistical package for social science therefore we may use the term normally we are always having some kind of um, when we learn the same thing we are keeping um, up to uh, what is that uh, of our life end that that's why now we are thinking about the learn relearn and unlearn so previously we are learning about the statistical we are thinking about sp stands for statistical package for social science now we have to handle we have to relearn the sp stands for is nothing but statistical product and service solution yes the second question for you i hope you already keep um, keep the same slido website slido.com kindly give your proficiency to handle the data analysis particularly in the descriptive statistics so i am talking about the descriptive statistics only because based on your um, uh, proficiency i may go little fast otherwise i may go little slow also um yes so i, I got 14 responses i got 14 responses i request all to give the response then only i, I can lead my session a uh, mafun kudriva uh, i hope in your end there is a network issue kindly check your network issue i hope my voice is clear to all of you any one or two people can give the response my yes, voice sir. Is clear. yes yes sir. yes sir. it's very clear yes thank you thank you yes so i received the 33 responses parallel i'm collecting some kind of small survey see here um, i got 35 responses out of 35 responses you may see here from here only 17 percentage of people are very good to handle the sps data analysis particularly for descriptive statistics 22 percent 21 percentage good 18 percent a moderate level 24 and uh, nearly more than uh, 45 percentage of people they are very lacking to the descriptive statistics through sps so thank you so much for providing a wonderful uh, report to me yeah the last question for you what do you need in the descriptive statistics station so what do you expect from me kindly give your answers as i hope you already familiar with some of the things that you can skip it what do you expect from these sessions kindly give the answers uh, that it may be a topic give us a topic like um, skewness kurtosis then uh, message of center tendency message of variability so don't type the key term okay some people are typing the key i request all to uh, what you need what you expected from the the particular section kindly give the answer in the topic ways because uh, you know the description study what are things may come under these description statistics you have to highlight what topic i may focusing much uh, in the description statistics even some people even the before the session swadhi is asking me to go with normality how to check the normality that was me focusing title to tips to report the descriptive statistics in thesis okay sure sure then concept of contextual example then any other mm, normality i may focus in the normality i'm sure then heteroscedicity so heteroscedicity um we may uh, look on only in the context of the um, regression analysis not here in the description studies we are not checking that one 
so even i may focusing on the normality that's why we focus on. checking the normality skewness and normal distribution so most of the people are much focusing on the normality sure i may highlighting the normality things during my presentation so thank you so much to provide your valuable input to me now i am moving my session um before going deeply about the descriptive statistic we must to know what kind of data we are using while attempting research normally we can classify the data into two types one is called quantity research quantity data other one is called qualitative data uh, which of things may come under the qualitative data in the sense uh, now you know what is a qualitative is like a characteristic character even sometimes the character we may you we may keep as a labeling also like male and female uh, for while doing a sps analysis or in doing a excel also we are keeping uh, instead of male and female we are we are assigning some kind of number labeling for the male and female for doing the uh, analysis so even we may convert qualitative into some kind of labeling so that's we knows normally the qualitative we divide into three data the first one is called binary what is my binary the binary means only the two mutually exclusive categories like only two possibilities are available like right or wrong true or false or yes or no so sometimes we may use the term binary instead of dichotomous di dichotomous di means the two only two classification two four classification if you are able to divide anything then we may use the term as a uh, dichotomous or a binary then second qualitative variable a quantitative variable we may use the term as a nominal uh, observation can be assigned a code in the number where the number is simply labels so you knows that uh, normally when you look on to the scales of measurement we know the, the four levels of measurement one is called nominal ordinal interval and ratio there's a four property it may be satisfied the three property the all the three uh, all the four scales to be um, Now, what is that accepting or rejecting? One is called magnitude value. Then equal intervals as the absolute is zero. So in the nominal scale, it won't uh, um, or it satisfy the quantity property. Equal intervals as the absolute is zero. It means that the nominal it like a category. Totally, it's a category variable. Like a character. If you categorize the people based on some kind of character, then we may um, think uh, we may use that data as a uh, nominal data. For example, gender. uh religion then locality eye color roll number even the roll number even the student's id number as roll number we think that is a number it may satisfy the quantity property but don't think it's a quantity property uh because the number the roll number or id number is labeling of the particular students is like identity of the particular student therefore instead of calling the name we are calling with the names of the roll number the particular students therefore this also may come to the nominal the third qualitative we may use the term as here uh, ordinal what is the ordinal in the sense it may satisfy the quantitative but only the things the quantity may be an uh, order based like ranking uh, if you classify the people uh, based on the economic status into three class which low medium and high we may uh use the ordinal data and uh, normally the quality data we may use the term as a uh, what is that characteristics uh, or the um we may tell as a continuous variable other one is called categorical variable we may use the term quality uh, data as a categorical variable so my handwriting very poor please kindly adjust with us so we may call this variable as a categorical but in the quantitative we may broadly divide into two one is called discrete other one is called continuous so in the context of scales of measurement uh, our interval and ratio scales may lies on the quantity only um here what is the discrete uh in generally you are able to counts any things then we may use the term as a discrete so counts are discrete variable normally the count uh, for example if you want to Uh, uh find the number of students attend the class number of person number of absent so we are telling as a whole number only uh, for example now the 97 people sir turn to be uh, join our section can i tell 97.5 people because we cannot be divide the people in part we not cut the people because here 97 people are attend the sense we can tell exactly the number so it may satisfy the uh, what is that like uh, uh, whole number properties only that kind of things uh, we may treat it as a discrete variable then the next one is called continuous 
um, normally the measured variable, measuring things we may treat it as a continuous variable. It may be an integer or a fractional. The best example, height of the students. So for example, if I take a consideration of age as a person, uh, suppose someone asks me, what is my age in the sense I may tell um, 30, uh, nine years, four months, three days, uh, four hours, like that it may extend it. So we could not be tell, Suppose the people asking your age is in years, you may tell it's a single number. If the person, if the people are asking your age, you may tell the entire things, how many years, how many months, how many days. We want to give the entire brief things. Entirely, you have to explain the things. Therefore, this kind of variable, you may treat it as a continuous. Then this also main thing um, before going to the um and descriptive analysis, because um, the people having the confusion when we can do a frequency. When we can do a, um, what is that, uh, measures of center tendency, measures of variability, when we can check the normality. In the context of the nominal and ordinal data, we could not do any kind of center, uh, measures of center tendency, measures of variability, or normality test. Because uh, this only the categorical variable. These two things we may treat it as a categorical variable. Categorical variable. I already mentioned that uh, there's a three property is important. The three property, one is called magnitude. The second property is equal interval, equal interval. Then third property is called absolute zero, absolute zero. So I am putting a say zero. So the three property uh, is to be common. Uh, from the three properties only, they divide into the four scales of measurement. In, in the nominal scale, the magnitude property won't be satisfied. Equal interval is not satisfied. Absolute zero won't be satisfied. So it means that, uh, it totally is a categorical nature variable. For example, gender, um, then uh, religion, locality. So the, basically the nominal data, we may use the term as a demographic variable. Uh, most of the demographic variable may lies in the nominal data. Most, not the entire, that also you have to look. Then uh, ordinal, what is the ordinal? It is a second level of the measures of variability. In this, only the uh, magnitude may satisfy, only magnitude satisfy equal intervals and absolute zero won't be satisfied. I request all to mute. I request all to mute. Um, uh, Bujas, please kindly mute from your end. Wait a second. Oh, yes. Uh, now the ordinal data uh, is satisfying only the magnitude properties. It means uh, only the number we can represent like a uh, rank based in order based for example the best example of this ordinal birth order so whether you are um, when uh, sorry in the birth order of you uh, in your home whether you are the first child or second child or third child like some kind of order is there otherwise if you want to categorize the people based on the economic um, status low moderate high otherwise you want to divide the people's intelligence into three classification like low intelligence, moderate intelligence, high intelligence. Then if you want to classify in a order based, we can use the term, we can uh, think about the ordinal data. So in this only we have to, uh, the ordinal data satisfying only the magnet property. But in the interval scale, it's satisfying the two properties. One is called magnitude and equal intervals, absolute zero won't be satisfied. Uh, in the interval scale, all this, most of the psychological variable. What are psychological variable in the sense like personality, like intelligence? Because the intelligent and psych, uh, personality won't reach the zero score, because none of the person's intelligence as well as the uh, what is that personality won't reach the zero score. That kind of psychological variable may lies on the interval, um, because it's satisfying only the magnitude. So because even we can measure the student's intelligence, even we can measure the student's personality through number, then equal intervals, it may satisfy the equal intervals. If you look onto the, the psychology textbook, they categorize the people's intelligence like 70 to 90, 90 to 120, like they, they divide the uh, intelligence into some kind of ranges. So if it's possible to divide that kind of ranges, that's also equal interval. Then third, the last one is called ratio. It is satisfying the, all the three properties. What are the three properties? Magnitude, equal intervals, and absolute zero. So normally the physical variables like height, weight. So uh, this is, I already mentioned that interval is a psychological variable. 
normally in the context of the physical variable like which are things we are able to see in our eyesight sometimes it may lies on the physical variable like uh, uh, height weight because if you measure the height some sometimes the dust weight it may be 0.002 gram um so that is why i tell us here i told these two variable it's called as a continuous variable interval and ratio is called as a continuous variable just i'm going to classify which are the statistics techniques we have to adopt um uh, while we finding the nominal or denominal interval or ratio I, especially i'm talking about the descriptive statistics so if you are founding the nominal or ordinal is uh, better you can go with only the frequency analysis or percentage analysis what is the frequency so for example how many males how many females in your sample then suppose you are collecting the data of the intelligence you want to categorize the intelligence low moderate high you want to check how many low students low intelligence students are there uh, how many moderate students how many high uh, high intelligence students are there in your class to parallel the achievement so only these two variable like categorical variable we can do only these two kind of classification no, only the two kind of statistics one is called frequency analysis other one is a percentage analysis but in the interval or ratio so if you are founding any kind of continuous variable you can do any kind of descriptive statistics like measures of tendency tendency measures of variability the normality test anything you can adopt only in the interval and ratio but the frequency and percentage don't be used in the context of the interval or ratio some people without only they are using the percentage analysis also because it's a continuous data no need to be do the frequency if it necessary you can do it otherwise skip it okay it's not there is no thumb rule we have to adopt all the statistics while doing the research okay. yes now when you look on to the descriptive statistics in spss the yeah manish kumar i'm going a little slow i hope you understand the the four scales of measurement those are understand the four scales of measurement kindly type in the chat box i'm going very slowly because the four measures uh, sir i have two questions yes yes uh sir uh, i and i have come across many controversies regarding the likert scale so yes. likert scale is a ordinal or interval because uh, in between the strongly agree and agree or between agree and neutral uh, is it Ma sure yeah. that there uh, there is same difference same equal interval yes exactly your question is correct madam if you look on to the your questionnaire or sk normally if you are using only one item for example you are measuring the attitude towards e learning if you are taking the consideration only one item the one item mm -hmm. having the five only the five classification like strongly agree agree uh, neutral disagree strongly disagree you are taking the consideration mm -hmm. only one item so the scores yes. minimum is one maximum is five you got clear it's like a order yes. it's like a order therefore yeah. if you are taking the consideration only the single item in the variable in the body uh, that the scale you can treat it as a ordinal you got clear but right. you have a 20 statement you have the 20 statement of the particular attitude so you learn you are going to right. check with totally only you got clear you are not checking the each individual item wise you are taking right. the total scores Yes. So the total score, yes. for example, 20 uh, items in the sense, max, minimum is 20, maximum yes. is 20 into 500. So the minimum yes. score is 20, maximum score 100. Therefore, yes. the bandwidth yes. is so high. Previously, we were checking the individual item. Now we are checking the entire total. Now, if you are taking the consideration 20 to 100, you may divide this course into 20 to 30, 30 to 40, yes. 40 to 50. Therefore, it may come yes. at the interval. I hope you are getting, based yes. on the items suppose you are taking the consideration only one item it may be ordinary but if you are taking mm -hmm. the consideration the entire uh, items as a total you want to do a calculation you can treat it as a interval i hope Means you are in that, that. Case we are measuring a whole physic uh, psychological uh, property uh, attribute so yeah, yeah exactly you are you are taking the consideration of all the psychological attribute therefore mm -hmm. it may treat it as a interval you got clear when you do your item analysis but when you are doing an item analysis you are mm -hmm. checking each item. That time you can treat it that particular items as the ordinal. You got clear? Yes. And one so, more thing, sir. Um, income, like monthly income. So we can, uh, we are able to see that. So will it come under ratio? No. See the case. Um, how it varies? But uh, whether you are blanks to education department, which blanks, uh, which department you are blanks to, ma'am? Uh, education. 
education see the case suppose uh, you are using as a uh, income as a demographic variable <coughs> Normally, when you are making a questionnaire, uh, you are using uh, some kind of sampling questions, uh, sample based questions. There you are asking uh, income, but in the income itself, you are categorized the uh, what is that uh, income like uh, no income, you are categorized like you know, no income, yes. uh, uh, zero to thousand or zero okay. to ten thousand and ten thousand. Yeah. So, what it means is you already categorized, therefore, where it lies, where it lies. Yeah. It is common with the nominal only because you already categorized into three. Uh, what is the ranges? Therefore, it may lie on the nominal. But as so the the, the if, yeah, that's also correct. That's also correct because in the case, uh, you are going with the, some kind of order also. Order, that's yes. why I use the term as yeah, some mm -hmm. order also it is there. Therefore, mm -hmm. we may treat this kind of thing with the uh, ordinal. But basically, we may use the term as a category because you divide as a category. You got clear. Suppose you are not divided into category, you are asking directly what is that amount, what is the annual income. So the people may give a lot of money. Okay, even some people put 0, 100, 200. And if you want to consider the entire um, sample, actually income base, you want to do, your, do, do the research, you can treat it as a ratio. If you are not classified, you got clear. Based on the investigator, based on the classification, if you did, then you can treat it as it's a nominal or ordinal. Everything that uh, research is concerned only. Okay, there is no thumb roll. You can keep that particular variable as a interval or a ratio. If you able to, uh, what is that? Convert it. This is the investigator. Okay. Yes. So now I move to the. I move to the descriptive statistics. Uh, normally, in the SPSS, the descriptive statistics they are giving the four options. In the SPC, one is called frequency, cross loop, cross tabs, and descriptives as well as the explore. I hope you are getting my screen. My screen is visible to all of you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, which screen you are seeing? Which screen you are seeing? Descriptive statistics. Yeah, you are seeing. No, sir, it's visible. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, in the descriptive statistics uh, in SPSS, uh, particularly, they are highlighting, they are giving the four options for us. One is a frequency, cross tab, descriptive, and export. But the problem with the researcher, those who are using SPSS without knowing, they are using the, uh, blindly, they are using the options. So, when we can use the frequency? So, when we can use the frequency? Anyone can give the answer for this. When we can use the frequency test? If the data, if the data is nominal, nominal, data. nominal data. Nominal, exactly, nominal. So if it's a continuous data, don't adopt the frequencies. Okay, it's not needed. Yeah, so that's why I'm giving this here. It is used when the nature of data is grouping or a categorical variable. Categorical nature, you can adopt uh, that kind of uh, statistics uh, frequency. Just I'm making a like yeah. So these are important key terms, so categorical. So if it's a categorical variable, you can go with the frequency analysis uh, in the frequency of the descriptives. Then there is an, another option called cross tab in the SPSS. Cross tabs yesterday when you saw talking about, he's talking about the pivot table. Like if you want to compare the two categorical variables like gender with religion, uh, gender with locality, because two, we needed two variables, but the two variables, both the variables should be in categorical nature. Then we can go with a cross tab. But in the context of frequency, we need only one categorical variable. In the cross tabs, we need a two grouping variable or two categorical variable. Then we can go with a cross tabs option. Then descriptive, just I'm logging with one second. Yes. The other one is called descriptive. What's a descriptive in the sense? Uh, one minute, I'm connected with the other laptop to record my screen. Yeah. The descriptive is an, the third option you may find out the, uh, in the SPSS. Uh, when we can use the descriptives in the, the um, SPSS in the sense, if the variable in a continuous nature, if the variable is in continuous, you can adopt a yeah, descriptive options. Then there is an, another option called explore. For example, if you have the two variable, one variable is a continuous nature, other one is a categorical variable, then you can use the explore option. So this is a way you have to use the options in the SPSS. See here, uh, in the frequency, we need only one variable. The variable should be categorical nature. In the cross tab, we need a two variables. Um, 
it's not compulsory true variable even you can go with, uh, but in the cluster we need compulsory true variable um, exactly but the two variables should be in a grouping or a categorical grouping is nothing but category if you want to do a descriptive options in the descriptive statistics of spss the main concern your variable should be a continuous nature like a interval or ratio uh, when you do the explore options in the spss in the sense we need a two variable one variable should be a continuous nature other variable should be a categorical then you can adopt a explore options uh, just i'm going to give five minutes about the, the preliminary introduction about the descriptive statistics after i move to the demonstration um, when summarizing the quantity variable immediately in our mind it asks the four questions i'm not talking about the quality i'm not focusing here as a frequency things when the data is a continuous or interval or ratio format immediately our mind having some kind of questions there's a four question it may comes one is called what is the center of the data so what is the main uh, center of the data uh, for finding the center of the data we have to depend on measures of center tendency measures of center tendency we know mean median and more so these three things we can adopt for checking the the center of the data and normally do you know the meaning of measures of center tendency means a single number a single magnitude value is represent the entire data for example if i ask you what is your 10th standard percentage you may highlight that 82 percentage you are giving us an average as 82 percentage from a single answer i could be able to understand the other marks of the uh, other marks of your 10th standard for example if you are getting the there's a five subject all the five subjects you are getting 82 only you are that's a chance you may get the 82 as a percentage like that a single percentage or single value it represents the entire data of the particular data sets that is we can use the mean median or more the second question in our mind how the spread out the data how the scores are spread out so normally we may check the range or quartan deviation or standard deviation or average with this answer is nothing but the measures of variability for checking the the spread out of the data we can depends on the measures of variability the third question it arises our mind what are the extremes of the data what is that uh, sometimes we may some people are highlighting sir i have some outliers how what we can do so for checking the extremes we may look on maximum value or minimum values as well the outliers these are the three things very much important if you look on to the, the extremes of the data. The fourth one, what is the shape of the distribution? Uh, because uh, even some people are asking the question, the normality. From the shape of the distribution only, we can check whether it is satisfying the NPC or a uh, skewness or a pertosis. We have to come for some conclusion for attempting a parametric statistic or a non-parametric. I hope he knows when we do a parametric, um, there is a, some kind of thumb rules are there. When we do a parameter statistics, the thumb rule for the statistical um, parameter statistics, the sample size should be should high. The sample size should be high. Then the second one, it satisfies the normality. The third one, the data, where you are using a uh, data uh, scale measures, the scale should be a continuous nature. Particularly if you ratio or interval, we use this kind of parametric statistics. So this is called parametric. The parallel, the opposite is called non-parametric. And that also while talking about the tomorrow percentage, I may focus on that. For checking the shapes of the distribution, we can check the skewness or kurtosis. That also is important. And just I'm going to um, tell messages of central tendencies consist of mean, median, mode, this is nodes. Messages of variability, range, average division, mean division, quarter division, this also you know. Then messages of the shapes of the distributions, um, this thing's important, kindly take a screenshot if it's possible, uh, because the people's having the confusion, how we can write the interpretations based on the skewness and kurtosis um, in their normality, uh, in the normality. Normally, the normal public curve, the skewness value is zero. In the context, in the context of the kurtosis, the measure kurtosis is nothing but the norm, normal public curve. The kurtosis value is zero. Uh, but in the psychometric purpose, we can accept some kind of ranges for the normality, as well as the right skewness, as well as the left skewness. That's why I'm focusing here. Uh, Basically, generally, if your skewness value is zero, we may treat it as a 
uh, narrow property curve. If the skewness value more than zero, it comes a positive score, we may treat it as a right skew. If the score is less than zero, we may treat it as a left skew, left skew. But the psychometric purpose, we may go with this kind of interpretations. The right skew means uh, it's above the plus one, is above the plus one. Normal probability curve, we can accept the region minus one, two, plus one. Uh, in the left skewness, we are using the less than minus one, zero. So it means that less than the minus one, we may treat it as a left skew. It's only for the parametric purpose. Psycho, sorry, it's like only for psychometric purpose when we for interpretation, we can adopt it. But generally, the normal probability curve, skewness value equal to zero. The skewness value, the right skewness value is above the zero. The left skewness value is less than the zero. It's generally, but for the psychometric purpose, the researcher, the, some of the authors, they highlight in this kind of interpretations. The same way, the kurtosis, normally the measure kurtosis, the kurtosis value is zero in the context of generally, but in the psychometric purpose, we can treat it as kurtosis minus one, two, plus one. Platic kurtic is more flattened than the normal. That is kurtosis value is less than minus one. If you want to treat it as a left of characteristic, the characteristic value is greater than plus one. So this is why these things you have to keep it in your mind. Some uh, authors or some books, uh, authors, they highlighted that you can add up plus or minus two is also acceptable while doing a normality. Only the few people's. Better you can keep it this one. Better to keep this one only. So don't keep it this one. Even some of the authors, they're highlighting it. Even you can go up to plus or minus two as I accept the region for the normal property. Now, the skewness and cutters, I hope he knows the basic uh, uh, differences between the skewness and, uh, sorry, and left skew and positive skew. Uh, the normal property curve, the mean equal to median equal to mode. So all the three properties all the three values to be looked the same. It may lie on the center only. If you divide into center, you are getting the two part. It's called symmetric. So if the data distribution is symmetric, we may treat it as a normal property curve. But in this context, see here, this is called positive skewness. When you can call as a positive skewness in the sense, if the tail is lies on the right side, if the tail lies on your right hand side, then it's called as a positive skewness. Normally the mode is the most frequent value. So most higher point mode. This is called median and uh, inclined point is mean. So in this context, what is that uh, relationship in mode and median and uh, mean in the sense? So in this context, uh, mean is less than, median is less than mode. So if the mode value is greater than the median or mode, then it's called as a positive skew. Similarly, if it comes here, mean, uh, I'm using the same mode, other order, median, and mean. So please, my handwriting is very poor. I need to add this. So this example, if the tile lies on the left side, left hand side of yours, then it's called as a negative skew. In this context, uh, mode is greater than median is greater than mode. So it means that mode values to be higher compared to the median mode. Uh, so this is why we have to come for conclusion also. If mean, median, mode are same, this is called as a normal probability curve. If mean uh, less than median, less than mode, then it's called negative skew. If mean greater than median, greater than mode, it's called as a positive skew. I'm talking about the reverse. Uh, if you're writing as a mean, median, and mode, it may change order. So I'm writing here, mean, uh, median, MD is a median, then MO is a mode. So here, mean is a higher, mean is a higher in the context, median than mode. Um, it's because normally when you're writing the number from left to right only, just you can write the number one, two, three, four, five, and you can check mean is lying the three, median is lying the two, mode is lying the one. So it means that the in this context, mode is a very low value. So if you have any doubts, you can just draw it and uh, check it. These are the some formulas I quoted here. Uh, there's a three formulas for skewness, Pearson first method, second formula, then Powell's methods. Similarly, the kurtosis, uh, this is called normal probability curve. This is called as a normal probability curve. Uh, if the curve uh, more than more big than the normal, then it's called lepto. Uh, if the curve more uh, flatter than the 
normal then is called platic kurtosis the question from someone so what is the question sir yeah so is that any way established in nor normal in conforming correct sampling yeah that i think i may focusing later so can you explain this skewness i already explained this skewness see this in example normally so for example you are conducting some test in your classroom just i am giving as exam in classroom most of the students are got highest mark you are conducting for 100 mark examination most of the students are getting highest mark um, it means that uh, all the students are getting the highest scores so it means the most points more number of the regions is may lies on the this side only so therefore tiles lies on the left side it satisfying the negative skewness it means that more most of the students in your classrooms are got more sc scores in the sense it may lies on the negative skew if you are conducting examination most of the students have got lowest scores what it happen normally if the students are getting lowest score the distribution may comes like this this is a distribution so this is a region for the lowest mark this is a region for lowest mark so this is a region lot of people are lying only the few people are getting the lowest highest score because of the re reasons only the tiles is lies on the left right side um, so this is why we have to predict we have to think what is my positive skewness and negative skewness based on the data itself based on the data itself while i am describing through spss or excel you may understand these things data screening we can use uh, data screening techniques frequency table histogram stem and leaf plots that also i may focusing then box plot and then frequency um, i'm just i'm moving to directly my demonstration yes uh, i hope yesterday i sent mail to all of you kindly open the data sets which i given to yesterday which i shared yesterday please i request you all to open your data sets uh -huh. yes yes sir please uh, hello i'm sorry just having a question about kurtosis <laughs> so there was uh, pl plus one and minus one according to which uh, number we can find it it is plus and minus so skewness is clear yes yeah. it is for example when we uh, see here yes mm -hmm. uh, it is kurtosis greater mm -hmm. plus one and if muscarthic it is equal to mm. uh, minus 1 to plus 1 mm -hmm. how we find it how we actually meso kurtosis is nothing but a height based okay so see this is height differences in the normal i hope you are seeing my screen in the normal distribution the kurtosis yeah, 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 yeah. yeah normal probability curve the kurtosis value is zero so it, it, there is a height 0.236 there is some height of the uh that is we may treated the term as a abscissa and ordinate i hope you x x we may call as an abscissa y axis we may treated as a ordinate in the ordinate of the height the highest point of the uh, normal probability curve the height is 0.24 something okay so they keep in mm -hmm. the values as zero kurtosis as a zero but if the value is more than the uh zero then we may treat it as a lepto if less than the zero we may treat it as a platic so this the classifications based on the diagram only while i am doing the calculation you can understand from the answer itself you can see there okay 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 okay, okay. okay. thank you thank you sir yes sir so, another doubt sorry yes sir yana chor me please yes sir Uh, and the age is originally uh, scale data so sometimes we uh, give the code 1 to 2 uh, yeah, to yeah, uh, uh, yes 1 2 3 4 that time that data will be ordinal or nominal or sir which one is correct sir actually uh, uh, we may treat as a categorical that is why the lot of confusion may comes okay even we are okay. treated as a nominal and ordinal both is a categorical only ah. for example you are asking directly to the students age they may give oh. students are given the different ages oh. but if you are asking the age in the year if you are asking the age in the year uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's come under the only the uh, what is that uh, categorical variable suppose you are asking the uh, age uh, year month date uh, then time or not time what is that hours minutes like that you are asking no so it oh. may treat it come up with the continuous data so it may lies on the interval oh. or ratio only 
but uh, while it, while in the data collection what we are doing we are uh, making this some kind of category for example below 25 about 25 you are keeping like this below 25 age group about 25 age group therefore you are dividing the age into two classification therefore we will treat it as a um, binary binary qualitative it's like a categorical variable but there is a order is there there is a order below 25 is an one order Below 25 is an other order therefore we may treat it that as an ordinal also you got clear so basically okay, thank you. the categorical so that is safe as well. okay okay yes thank now uh, this is a data i am sharing to all of you kindly open this data first you can open the master table correct master table correct one uh, master table false one uh, first you can open the master table false because i, I intentionally i am putting uh, intentionally i am making some kind of mistakes in the data uh, why i intentionally made in the sense uh, the people uh, while you uploading the data or while doing any kind of executions in the spss the output may comes that is the biggest problem in the spss if you are giving the horse the findings may comes as here uh, down okay that is a better uh, as a researcher we must to know what kind of data we have to input it what kind of output it, it comes from the spss that we must to very clear the problem if you are giving the wrong data in the spss it may generate and gives the answer but finally we are using the same interpretations we are keeping the same findings and writing the interpretation but if you look if you look deeply there is a chance lot of mistakes while typing the data itself lot of mistakes may arise how to resolve the data or data filtering uh, before going to the spss that's things i may focusing yesterday itself are highlighting but uh, before going to directly spss i may focus in this one very few minutes uh, i am going to check uh, where i did the mistakes while i am uh, typing the data entry uh, this is here data sets i am using the data set master table 1 false kindly see i am not taking the master table 1 correct because the correct data is there i am selecting the master table 1 false i want to check whether the data which i typed here is it everything is to be correct from my end okay which i corrected which i type from my end is it correct or not i want to ensure that one how we can ensure in the sense first you get to select all so select all control e select all control e and selecting all after this you can go to the right side uh, home options you may already there the menu bar the home is there in the right you are getting the short filter options once you click short filter you are getting the filter option once you click filter once you click filter you are getting the small icon see a small icon in the each title in the each title of the each column gender one small icon then quali qualification one icon locality like that you are getting some kind of small uh, arrow mark small down arrow mark i hope you are getting now i am going to check whether i am typing properly uh, my data just i'm clicking the gender corner once i click gender corner you are seeing the uh, the data one two it means that one represent male two represent female as an investigator i classify like this so there is no three there is no other numbers therefore in this gender wise i didn't do any mistakes because the maximum score one minimum score two in the context of gender because one uh, is a, like a labeling variable one is a male two is a female then there is no mistakes happen in the gender side the final then i'm going to this qualification see i'm keeping the cursor near to the that small arrow mark once i click here you are getting the small pop-up menu there you are getting the zero one two twenty two normally the qualification as an investigator i divide like this ug and pg ug is a one pg is a two postgraduate but see here there is a two numbers extra it comes what are the number zero 22 so this is called data filter we have to find what is that eliminate this kind of error before going to the spss i am going to modify that 0 and 22 because knowingly or uh, sorry unknowingly i made, made the mistakes therefore what i'm going to do i'm removing all so i'm removing the select all options i'm selecting the option i'm selecting the uh, what is that the mistakes made my friend only the and the number extra number other than the logical number of the qualification one and two i'm selecting the two numbers zero and 22 click okay 
once you click OK, you may see the data where I'm typing 22, where I'm typing zero. See here, the sample number 42, I'm typing 22. So we have to take it the sample paper or sample questions which you have. Kindly check whether the qualification, whether it's UG or PG. Suppose it's a PG, you can type two. Then the 106 sample, the sample number 106, uh, I typed wrongly, it's a zero. It may be a one mail. Then 343, I'm changing. Then 406 sample as a mail. Then 643 sample is a female, 703 sample is here, male. So like that, I'm modifying the, uh, what is that, where I did the mistakes, I'm modifying from here itself. After modifying, click once, click once and select all. Click once the corner and select all and click OK. So you may get the entire data sets. So once if you click here, you may see the qualification, only two numbers are available. Therefore, you don't do any mistakes in the qualification side. Then similarly, if you click the locality, if you click the locality, um, you are getting only one and two. So the rural one, urban two, therefore no mistakes arise in the locality column and click OK. Then I move to the management. Uh, the management I'm treated as a government aided and self-finance. One is a government, two is a uh, aided, third is a uh, self-finance colleges. Therefore, where I did the mistakes, what is the number is extra in this context? Please kindly type in the chat box. What is the mistakes made it from my end? Any idea? Yeah, so here the mistakes 33, exactly, thank you. So I'm selecting the 33, I'm selecting the 33 and click OK. So once I click 33, I can see the three mistakes I did, uh, the sample number 100, sample number 400, sample number 700. Instead of three, I may type as in 33, therefore I'm changing like this, 333. Three, three. So after changing the data, you can go with, once again, and select all and OK. Now the questions to all of you. I hope how many of them doing parallel along with me? Those who are doing parallel along with you, kindly check whether any mistakes happen in the college type. Any mistakes happen in the college type? Yeah, what are the mistakes you found? So the college type, I may keep it like uh, uh, one, two, three only, rural uh, college type, yeah. Uh, boys college, girls costume as with the choir, like this. Okay, there is a mistakes, zero and 20, exactly. I'm starting zero and 22. Then click OK. So you are finding these options. Just I'm changing randomly. Um, yes, I'm changing this. So did you found any um, wrong things in the residence? Kindly check in the residence, any mistakes? In the residence, any mistakes? In the residence, any mistakes? In the data sets, exactly. There's been uh, things correct. So there is a mistake three, two, two, one. I'm starting this one. I'm changing the data as to two. R1, okay. Uh, I'm removing the, these options, then click OK. Then any uh, um, wrong in the study habits? So kindly click study habits. Did you found any, because it's a continuous data. It is a continuous data. Any uh, mistakes you found from here? No, they will see, we can do it, see here. Because we know that I know the maximum score of the uh, study habits 300 only. 300 only. But once you click here, you can see there is an one data, one score is 2500. So instead of 250, I may type as 2500. So how we can change it, go and select all, select all and remove it and click this one and change the 250, changes the 250. So there's a three times I did the mistakes. So like that, even you can check the entire data. If you know the minimum and maximum scores of the achievement, intelligence. So I know the minimum score, uh, maximum score is 100 only in the achievement. Therefore, there is no mistakes happen in the achievement. There is no mistakes. Uh, in the intelligence, I'm checking here. In the intelligence, maximum score is 250. Here also, there is no mistakes. Therefore, even sometimes, uh, for example, uh, the minimum score is 100 only in the intelligence, but I'm typing as a 84, just for doing, there's an 84. What did happen? Once you click here, you can see the minimum score is 84. So there is no score, there is no way to come minimum score is an 84. What do you have to do? 
select it here and find where you did the mistakes and select the sample number three in your data sets, correct data sets and check the correct intelligent mark and give the correct mark. So suppose 145, I'm giving the mark. So this way we have to do the data filtrations in the Excel itself, the data filtration in the Excel. Now I am moving to the uh, SPSS. Before going to the SPSS, yesterday it starts demonstrating how to do a data uh, descriptive statistics uh, by using the Excel. That's why I'm going to only for two minutes because while talking about descriptive, I may highlight once again to the uh, Excel also. That's why I'm highlighting you. Uh, so now the first data you modified is the correct data. Uh, for that, I'm going with a small data, then only you can understand how it will work. Okay. There is a uh, Excel sheet I given to you. Click the descriptive statistics. So in the Excel sheet, lot of sheets are available. Go with the descriptive statistics. Go with the descriptive statistics. Once you open it, you are getting these scores like this. There is a uh, uh, two groups, male group and female group. Uh, male group consists of 15 students. Female group consists of 20 students. Right, I already found the mean and median for cross checking for you. I'm keeping the answer also. I'm going to do a um, descriptive statistic with the use of Excel itself. How we can do? Yesterday, you already installed your um, what is that, uh, data analysis add in. For that, what you can do, go with the data. I request you all to open the descriptive statistics. After that, go with the data. Once you click the data, you are getting the data analysis path here. Click the data analysis path. Once you click the data analysis path, even we can do a t-test, f-test, anything we can do with the use of Excel. Suppose you don't have a uh, SPS, because why I'm focusing the sensor, I'm going to give uh, the assignment uh, to do a t uh, descriptive statistics. Some, oh, some people's not having the X, um, SPSs, you can um, give the uh, what is that uh, assignment task with the use of Excel. So that's why I'm highlighting this one. Um, in the once again, once you go with the data, go with the data analysis. In the data analysis, go with the uh, descriptive statistics. See here, descriptive statistics, and click OK. Yes, you are getting the different uh, interface. Uh, and just I'm explaining the interfaces. Input range. What is our input range? Our variable. Our data is our input range. So yesterday saw talking about the, the data like B2 to B16, then C2 to C21. So instead of typing what we can do, uh, I'm going to select it. Okay, instead of typing here, we can select, see here, keep the input range, keep the cursor, kindly check, the cursor should be in the input range. The cursor should be blinking in the input range box. After this, go and select the, the two columns. The two columns. You can select male and female columns. Then immediately you are getting this kind of dollar symbol, B1 to C21. Okay, this is called input range. This is called input range. I hope you don't have doubt in this input range. After this, uh, there is a label in first row. Because uh, I'm, you can enable the label first row because I'm selecting male, female, the heading also. The top, the title also I'm selecting here. Therefore, I'm selecting the label in first row. Suppose you are avoiding, you are selecting only the data's only, uh, you are not selecting the uh, male and female as a heading, then leave the label in first row. But here I'm selecting the label also, therefore click the label. So this is the basic things we have to do. First is select the range, then output range. Output range in the sense output, where we can keep the output. Whether the output you want to go with a new worksheet or new workbook, but I like to go with the same workbook or same worksheet, how we can do it. Uh, output range, select the output range, keep the cursor, see here. Now the cursor is blinking that area, blinking this, that box. After this, select the path, select the cell. Now I'm selecting the cell E3, I'm selecting the E3. It means the E3 only the results may comes. Right, this for the output, the result, it may comes in the E3. Then after selecting the output, click the summary status. This is important. Once you click the summary statistics only, you are getting the output. Click the summary statistics and click OK. Click OK. Once you click OK, you are getting the, the results of the descriptive statistics. Kindly see, kindly see. How many of them uh, get this answer? 
How many of them get this answer? Those who are uh, did this one, uh, kindly type in the chat box D D D. Yes. So Manish Kumar, Raj, thank you. Okay. Then, so I hope now it's very simple. Yesterday, I was uh, highlighting very fastly. That's why I'm going very step by steps. Even some other people not having the SPSS, you have to do the uh, data. Uh, what is the analysis like this only? Uh, Feroz, uh, once again, uh, once again, kindly see here. Just I'm removing this column. Uh, yeah. Yes. So go with the descriptive statistics because I'm going with a small example. There is a male and female achievement mark of male and female here. What I'm going to do, click the data and click the data analysis. After data analysis, select the descriptive statistics. Uh, now find the tab for data analysis. Jainab uh, Zen, I think, I think you are not installed the data analysis because yesterday we are already, SISR described how to do a uh, installation of the uh, add-in. Parallelly, I'm sending the assignment also. Assignment as kindly look on this one, then you may understand uh, how we can install this one. Once you install the the data data analysis only, you can do this one. Once you click the data analysis, click the descriptive statistics. The three things is important. One is uh, select the region. So input range. Uh, the people having the confusions uh, because if you are keeping the cursor here, it won't be select. Always keep the cursor in the input range. So once you ensure that cursor is to be blinking, then you can select the region. You can select this region, select the, the data region, then label as the first row, because you are selecting as a heading also. Then I like to output range, the output range where we can keep it, keep the output range and check whether the cursor is blinking here. Then after that, you can select the range. Now I'm going to generate the, uh, what is that, uh, uh, output in the D5, in the D5. Then finally, you can pick the summary statistics, then click OK. Then you are getting the mean, standard deviations, median, modes, standard variance, kurtosis, range, minimum, sum, and all. Okay, so I think you don't have a doubt at all in this. Just I'm going to the SPS directly, because yesterday it's just describing what is the mean, standard error, and all. That's why I'm not highlighting much. Yes, now uh, I'm saving this data, otherwise remove it. I'm closing this one. Only the things you have to ensure in some of the SPSS version, if you want to import your Excel data into the SPSS, if you're opening your Excel, it won't be accepted. So better you can close your Excel sheet. Close your Excel sheet before you export your data into the SPSS. First thing, some of the versions, only few versions is not supporting. I request you all to, uh, close, so not minimize, close your Excel data and check where the file is located. So I'm keeping the file, that file is data set demonstration. I'm keeping in the, uh, I'm keeping it uh, uh, in, the desktop, in the desktop itself, the file name data set demonstration. Like that, kindly check where you are keeping the file. The next thing, see here, open your SPSS. Those are already installed the SPSS. What you can do? Click the start button, click the start button. Once you click the start button, you can check the IBM. It may come as an alphabetical. Go with IBM SPS statistics. There you are finding the IBM SPS statistics. Click the IBM SPS statistics 22. So if you are clicking the license and all, it won't be work. You can check IBM SPS. Suppose we are using it 21 or 17, you can select the, the statistics 17 or 16. Then click 22. Once I click 22, you are getting the SPSS. So now the SPSS screen you are getting. How many of them reach up to this level? Please, I request all to go parallel um, because uh, each and every uh, steps is very much important. If you forget, you could not be follow data. Yes. Yes. Can I move the next level? Kindly open the, kindly check whether, how many of them reach this level? Those who are reaching this level, kindly type in RR in the chat box. Kindly type in the RR in the chat box. Um, so please, those who are not able to download, you can try. Okay, so don't worry. You can, I'm sharing the video from this also, you can explore later. So of course you are not having the SPS in the sense, right? Now in the SPSs, there is a two view main view. One is called data view, other one is called variable view. See here, in down, yeah, SPS 25 is also sufficient, Sandhya Kumar, which software you are using, you can use it. I'm using 22 only. 
okay so which softwares even you can using 16 17 or 20 if you have the sps that is enough to go for what is that uh, what is that come along with me yes now the data view variable view what's the data view our data set is visible to here only the data sets in the variable view the variable names then we can check the what kind of data whether it's a nominal ordinal interval everything we may see from here and these are the two options important data view variable view data view variable view. these are two important things and one more view is called output view in the sps there is only three view one is called data view so here we may see the datas in the variable view we can see the variable descriptions then once you do your analysis we may get the, the third view is called as here um, the third view is called output view only the three views in the space now i'm going to import the data i'm going to import the the excel data which i'm having into the sps how we can do it please kindly see it here click the data view first after this click the file options click the file options once you click the file options you are getting the open options uh, so the third view is called output view so in the output view while doing analysis only you are getting the the third view output view raji sister i hope now you are getting i'm clicking the open and click data i'm clicking the data so please kindly check the path to import the data from the excel so how we can import the data from the export uh, from the excel this is in format go with file open and data so this is preliminary only so even some people are not familiar with this that's why i'm going very slowly see here after this you are getting the uh, path so where if the file is located you have to select it i'm keeping the file in the desktop i'm selecting the desktop then after finding this desktop and uh, my file name is uh, like a data uh, i'm keeping as a file starting with file name is starting with the data but see here here it's showing you only the sav field please kindly see um, yes uh, Deb, uh, Priya, i removed the uh, sps crack question from the uh, google classroom if you want i will share that separately to your uh, mates please wait in the afternoon okay um now in the file name it is not that see here there's no file name why in the sense because my file type is say excel but here the default file type is spss the spss type is dot sav is an extension but i like to import my excel data therefore what i'm going to do select the file types and select the excel once you select the excel you can see the excel data sets see here you are seeing the excel data sets there i am selecting the the file which i am going to be import data set demonstration uh, yeah we have to change the file type then open once you open here lot of even the uh, our uh, data sets having lot of pages lot of sheets uh, correct sheet, false one, master table, experimental, item analysis, a lot of things are there. Just I'm going with the first one, master table one, correct. I'm clicking this one, master table one, correct. Yes. So keep the cursor, check whether you are selecting the worksheet, master table one, click OK. Only this much you can do. Kindly see your data. Now it will be imported into the SPSS. So those who are importing the SPSS, kindly type in the uh, I, I, I in the chat box. I'm going to the next level. This is the first steps. Yeah. So now people are important. Good. Okay. Yes. Kindly Vandana, ma'am. Kindly check. Okay. Yes. Right. Now I'm going to define uh, some kind of tips to you. How we can type the data. So even some people are having the doubt how to how to select one file. Vandana, what is the doubt? How to select one file in the sense? You can select the file. After selecting the Excel, you are checking the file. Then a lot of worksheets are available. You can select a worksheet. Uh, one thing uh, I will do once again, kindly see, click the file, open, data. Once you click data, automatically uh, select your file type. So select the file location because the file location I am keeping is a desktop. The file locations, I am keeping the file is in the desktop. So if I'm selecting the desktop, after selecting the desktop, you can change the file type as the Excel because I'm going to import the Excel data only. So select the Excel. Once you select the Excel, you are seeing the file name, data set, 
demonstrations. After selecting this set, click open, click open. Once you open, you are getting this much of uh, a small interface. In this interface, lot of sheets are available, but I'm going to demonstrate only the first sheets only. That is called master table one, correct? Default it may selected, then click OK. Once you click OK, automatically you are getting this view. Uh, Vandana M Rao, it means that you are not installing your software properly. Kindly check your end. Uh, yes. If you are not working in your site in the sense, there is a problem for your software. You are not installing well. Uh, kindly check whether, whether you are getting the all the menu bar in your SPSS. Sometimes if you are not um, installing the SPSS, only the two options, file and edit options only there. Other option won't be there. Kindly check whether you, you are getting the all the menu bar in your SPSS. If you are all the menu bar in the SPSS, after it, I think uh, you, are ex you are opening the Excel. Vandana, kindly close the Excel. Kindly close the Excel. I think you are not close the Excel, you are minimizing it. That is the issue. Kindly close the Excel and then do the process. Now the problem solved. That's why I'm telling in some of the version, if you're opening the Excel sheets, you could not be import the data directly from the SPSS. First, you have to close the, the Excel sheets of the data set, then finally you can do this process. Can the Vandana kindly do one second more? Yeah. Yes, now uh, kindly see the row. What is the row represent? Any idea? So the row one, two, three, four, five, six, there is a number. What is the row represent? What is the row represent? Any idea? Row denotes? Record. Sorry? Yeah, sample, exactly, exactly, sample. It's a respondent sample. What is the column represent? Column represent? Column represent? Variables. Yeah, exactly, Manish, correct. Okay, exactly. See here, uh, in the gender qualification, locality, management, college type. Uh, now, I want to get your answer from your end, get the answer from your end. Gender is a what kind of data? What kind of data? Nominal, sir. Categorical. Exactly. Category qualification. Qualification. Categorical. Categorical. You can, don't think as a nominal audience. Just you can tell categorical condition. This is enough. Okay. Management. Categorical. College type. Categorical. Residence. Residence. Categorical. Categorical. Study habits. Categorical. Continuous. It is descriptive. Achievement. Descriptive. Not descriptive, so you can use the term as a continuous. Okay. Intelligence? Continuous. 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 Now, continuous. Yes. Now, this data we imported. Just I'm going to the variable view. I'm clicking the variable view. See here, automatically the measures it may treat it. Uh, in the SPSS, there is no uh, interval or ratio. The interval and ratio may treat it in the SPSS directly as a scaling variable. Scaling variable. All the nominal categorical variable nominal it comes as a nominal. This is a chart. See here, there is a small three circle is treated as a nominal. Then the study habits, achievement, and intelligence treated as a scale. It means that this title, this kind of scale option is called as a continuous. This is called as a categorical in the nominal. I hope now, if you are using the 22 version or more than uh, above the 22 version, automatically it may come. Otherwise, from your end, you can change it. Sometimes, if you are using 17 version and up, it will automatically won't be detected. You have to change it. You have to change it. Right? Um, what is the doubt, uh, uh, Pranji? Um, so, yes. Just I'm going to tell once again, after going the data, and you are seeing the data with this much of options. Uh, if you click the variable view, you can check the, the measures, the measures automatically may get it. Minus version 16, so some columns are missing. That's why, Vandana, you can select the things. If you click here, automatically it comes here, ordinal or nominal, correct the ordinal. That's why I'm telling more than, if you are using the more than 22 versions, uh, above the 22 version, automatically it may generating. If you are using the lower version, it won't be highlighting, just you can select it, okay. The next thing, main thing here, the gender, I'm going to define the values because uh, the output also otherwise may come one and two only. Better if you define the variable, easy to 
compiled as a data results while writing the uh, interpretations in the thesis purpose. Uh, here, go with the gender. I'm clicking the variable view. In the gender, I'm clicking the none options, the values. There, the value one represent male. Then value two represent female. I'm giving the answer. Then click OK. Click OK. OK, I'm giving the answers. Yes, just I'm going to data view. See the data view. Still the number 211 is there. 21211. I want to check in what manner the value comes because I'm giving us a label only. I'm going to check the labels of the value. For that, in the menu bar, there is a, some kind of bar is there. See here, I'm clicking the value labels. There is an option A1. If I click here, automatically you see here, all the two it may convert as a may, uh, two female, one is a male. Can you check whether it's working to variant? Is it working to variant? Can you type in the www in the chat box? This is one way we got to check whether is it working well in variant. Okay, so now check. The same way I'm going to change the qualification. How we can change the qualification? I'm going with the variable view. I'm going with the qualification. There I'm clicking one is a UG, then two is the PG. I'm giving it two is a PG, then click add and click OK. Now I'm defined the qualification also. I'm going to data view. Kindly click once again and see. You can see what are the modifications you did, what are the values it given, automatically comes here. Okay, can you move to the next level? So if you're ready, I move to the next level. So these are the basic things. I may skip the other things. You can explore it. This is for numeric. Uh, with uh, this is not that much of important. Okay, now this working. Okay. Now I am going to highlight how to be a descriptive statistics with the use of SPSS. Uh, for doing uh, before going to the descriptive, go with the data view. Go with the data view. Um, and one more thing I want to highlight. So the variable view you see here, sample gender automatically the column heading it may consist in variable view. Suppose the same thing if you want to label it here. Uh, as the output, what you have to do? Keep the label. I'm already copied that and pasted here. I'm copying this entire thing and paste as a label. And um, for example, uh, if you want to use the item analysis, if you want to add the, all the items descriptions, you can add the item descriptions here in the label option. Then it's good. In the label option, you can add the, all the item descriptions. In the output also, you may get the, the each item also. It's a good. So this much is needed. Uh, I'm going with the data view. Kindly of check I'm the data view. Now I'm clicking the analyze. For doing all the statistics, for doing the statistics, we have to depend on a, only one option in the SPA that is called analyze. Analyze. But uh, now I'm going to intend to do is a descriptive statistics. Any options related to descriptive statistics here? Kindly of check. Once I click analyze, did you found any options related to the descriptive? Any options related to descriptive? Kindly type your answer. Did you found any yeah, answer? Second yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if you want to do descriptive it, statistics. Exactly, exactly. So if you want to do a descriptive statistic for your research, go with analyze and go with the descriptive statistics. That is only is enough. Don't explore the other things for the descriptive statistics. For doing descriptive statistics, click the analyze and go with the descriptives. And I already mentioned there's a four options are important in the descriptives. One is called frequency. Other one is called descriptive, explore and cross tab. So the question for you, when we can use the frequency? Please, when we can use the frequency? Anyone? Nominal when data. It, it's when it nominal. is nominal data. Yes, yes, just I'm clicking the frequency. Just I'm going to explain how we can do a frequency. I'm clicking the frequency. Yes, in the frequency, um, which other data is permissible to do check the frequency? Can you tell which other data? We can adopt. Gender. Yeah. Can we do your study habits? Can we do your study habits? It is continuous, sir. Yeah, no need. Yeah, so there's no need. Even some people they're doing, for example, see here, I'm selecting all, I'm selecting study habits achievement. Okay. I am selecting the categorical variable as well as the continuous variable also. But the, that is why I'm telling the SPSS, it gives the solution for all, but uh, without knowing if you're incorporating the SP in the data in the uh, thesis. It's totally unfair. Please, uh, what is that? Be um, uh, ensure whether the particular data is to be uh, acceptable for the this kind of frequency analysis. Just I'm going to select. 
and selecting the continuous as well as the descriptive so as well as the continuous categorical and continuous i am using but uh, normally we won't use the continuous data then in down there is an option called descriptive frequency here there is an option called descriptive frequency select it and if you want a chart click the chart normally what is the chart is more appropriate for the nominal data any idea what is the uh, chart is more um, suitable for bar, doing a, bar uh, chart bar chart otherwise pie chart is both is go okay bar chart or a pie chart don't go with the histogram don't go with the histogram okay histogram is only for is histogram only for more continuous data exactly so once the continuous data then you can go with the histogram even the people without knowing they are doing histogram for example i am clicking the histogram the output may comes because yes even i am clicking the histogram the output may comes in the spss some people they are adding that histogram for the categorical variable their thesis so be sure because this is general uh, things uh, basic knowledge for the uh, doing for to, for making any chart for the qualitative data particularly for the categorical variable you can go with the bar chart or pie chart only uh, i am selecting the bar chart now and click continue and click okay see here what it happened the results may comes the results may comes yeah so now this is the first table is a whole summary i am leaving this summary uh, male 197 female 803 the percentage these are the other things not needed what is the first column and second column here is needed then qualification locality why the qualification and uh, gender only the names is coming but in the locality and uh, management is not comes the uh, uh, what is the label why any we idea we have not assigned a value in this not again we are not defining we are not defining thank you thank you we are not defining but see the problem see the problem uh in the study habits whether the study habits we are accepting we are doing is a frequency analysis is it correct is it correct no no sir. No, sir. no that is why so even the people using the, all the statistics so see here i am doing the bar chart i am doing a bar chart for the gender then frequency management uh, resident study habits even the achievement everything is coming see here okay so now if you want to be modify the chart i am going to give the tips also what you have to do double click it so once you, if you want to change the color if you want to add the label and all double click the excel double click the the uh, results automatically the chart editor options may comes you can use the, all the plenty of features are available you can change the color you can change the color and you can modify anything from here so see here bar options fill border so which are the border you want and then variables if you want to show the variables you bar option depth angle variables you can modify anything finally the modified versions chart is available you can copy and paste in your data uh, in your thesis that's enough okay so you can explore these options from here yeah? now see here i'm changing the color i'm changing the color so once i change the color i am going to close so now see here what it happened automatically the graphs may change color okay change so like that you can do any kind of modifications in the chart if you want to import this chart in your this purpose okay this for frequency any doubts in the frequency can i move to the next option uh, only the mistakes what i did here in the descriptive statistics is permissible only for the only for the only for the categorical variable can i move can i move the next one yes so now i i move to the the second descriptives now we have to tell what is a descriptive when we can use the descriptives can we do a categorical variable or the continuous variable continuous variable for continuous exactly continuous so the first one um, frequency the second one is called descriptives uh, so bootstrapping and all for modifying the the pivot table structure it's not needed because default there is a structure is that don't be modify it okay so don't uh, click the the bootstrapping and all it's not essential for us okay yes now uh, i am going with uh, yeah so which are the variable is me uh, good for doing the descriptive analysis kindly tell the variable name study habits achievement study habits achievement intelligence okay. i am keeping the study habits i am keeping the study habits i am clicking the options 
I'm clicking the options. Uh, once you click the options, you're tossing the mean, minimum, maximum, variance, range, which are the things you want, you can standard error mean, kurtosis, skewness. So everything I select, even the sum value. So which are the values in you, the descriptive, you can select all the values. Then click continue. Then the style options for the changing the pivot table. Then bootstrapping also for changing the, the structure, some kind of structure if you want to uh, or change the number of samples and that is needed. But normally we are not using this one. If you're using it, may come that some kind of confusion may come better. You can use the option option. Then after keeping the options, one more option is that people's not familiar with this. Save standardized value that is called Z score. Suppose you want to do, if you want to get this Z score also, you can click the save standardized values. So it means that standardized value is nothing but a Z score. Uh, what is the need for research? For example, I'm using the three variables. What is the study habits? Then second one is called achievement intelligence. The three variables are different measure because the study habits is two, uh, 300 mark. Then achievement 100 mark. In the context of the, what is that? Uh, mm, one more variable. Uh, intelligence 250 mark. The three scores are different to each other. Therefore, better if you want to convert in the, all the three variables in the same measure, we can use, uh, we can convert as a research score. It's like a, a standard score. Uh, normally, uh, for doing SPS, no need to be change the standard score. If you need, you can do it the standard score and click the standard score and click OK. Once you click OK, you are getting the, the entire output. How many of you get the output? Kindly, if you are getting the output, kindly type O in the chat box. Those who are getting the output, kindly type OO in the chat box. Yeah, Sadish, Nawful, good, Muhammad, Sona, Nithya, Ranish, correct, Zainab, Sanju. Oh, that's good. Thank you, thank you all. Now, uh, can I extend uh, up to one o'clock because now it's 12, 12 30 because I'm talking about very basic thing. That's why it takes little time. I'm going up to one for two, 12, 45, okay? Yes, now see here. Now we are getting the study habits, range score, 140. What does the range represent? What is the range represent? Highest score minus? Difference. Uh, difference uh -huh. Highest score minus lowest score. What is the minus lowest. Yeah, what is the minimum score? Minimum score of the steady habits. Maximum score of the steady habits. Therefore, 145, 285 minus 145, what is the answer? 285 minus 145, 140. That is called range. Then some study. What is the sum statistics? All the thousand samples, uh, the scores, uh, addition is called uh, some statistics. The mean score, mean score of statistics 204, the standard error, mean standard error 0.951. We need only this uh, statistics mean score only, the mean score, then standard deviation, then skewness value. So we can treat only the skewness value. See here, the skewness value is 0 0.243. What it means? What it means? Is it a normal probability curve or a normal? Is, it's normal, but I'm talking, I'm not talking about the, uh, what is that? Uh, uh, like um, for writing a report, generally I'm talking, if the skewness value is zero only is called normal. The skewness value is zero only is normal, but it's above the zero only, no? Therefore, what it means? It is skewed to right, sir. It's skewed, it's called positive skewed. Positively skewed. It's positive skewed. But uh, if you're talking about, we can tell us and positive, but it's somewhat very near to the zero. Because zero and zero point two is very near to zero. Therefore, we can take a consideration. We can treat it see a uh, normal public curve in the context of the uh, doing a non-parameter parameter statistics. I hope you are getting. But generally, we may treat it, this one is a positive skew only. But statistically, we can accept the region plus or minus one region for doing a uh, parameter statistics. Then kurtosis value. See the kurtosis value. What is the kurtosis value? Minus. What do you mean? What is minus represent? Left or platy? Left or platy? Platy. Exactly. Exact is platy. But we may treat it for writing as a report in the thesis. We may accept plus or minus one region in the mesocarthesis. Therefore, for writing report, we may treat it as a uh, what is the meso? But generally, we may treat it is common of the uh, platy only. But see the it's very near to the zero. It's very near to the zero. Yeah, so this is why we had to write the interpretations. And uh, I request you all to go with uh, other data, uh, like uh, descriptive statistics, go with the descriptive. And instead of study habits, uh, check the achievement, check the achievement and intelligence. 
check the achievement and intelligence go with achievement and intelligence and click okay and tell the report what is the report it comes to area kindly tell the mean scores kindly tell the mean scores of achievement what is the mean scores of achievement what is the mean score 75.90 mm -hmm. then intelligence uh, 17 sorry uh, 178.865 exactly correct correct exactly super okay now see the skewness kindly give the interpretation for skewness general skew i am talking about generally okay don't come for the the uh, status what is the thesis purpose what is the skewness what is the skewness minus 1.12 the first one what is the first one first one achievement minus 1 Ah, uh, minus one. Ah, uh, minus one. What do you mean? Minus point, point one. Whether it's minus point it, one two. Is it a positive or negative? Negative. Positive. Negative, sir. Yeah, it's called negative square. Negative square. But what is the second one? Near to zero. Near, near to, to zero. zero. Very near to zero. Therefore, we may treat it as a normal public. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> what about the kurtosis? Can we give that interpretation for kurtosis? Platy. Platy also. Platy. Platy. Second one. Mm -hmm. Platy for both. Platy. Oh, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's okay. I hope you now you are understand these things. Can I move to the next one? Can I move to the next one? Uh, yes. Before that, you can check your data sets. Kindly check the data sets. You are getting the score, no? How many are getting the data sets like this? Is it study habits? Is it achievement score? Is it intelligence? Is it intelligence? How many of them? But we are not typing here. We are not input this data here. But automatically generated. How? Any idea? Any idea? We selected standard scores. Yeah, we selected the standard score while doing a descriptive. So that's why it's coming. So it's represent here. Yeah? What it means? What it means? It is a standard score. It is a standard score. What it means in the sense steady habits two not three means uh, that formula you know. So what is the Z score formula? X minus mu divided by standard, standard deviation. Yeah, that is a formula. If you are adopting, you are getting this. What is it? Zero point one seven represent. What is it? The steady habit is the part two not three is lies on the above the mean score, so minus represent below the mean score. You got clear? Minus represent deviation from the mean, sir. Ah, plus symbol represent the plus symbol represent the above the mean score. I hope now you are understand. Uh, so yes, if you need, you can use this kind of standard score. It's not compulsory. Okay, if you need, you can use this Z score also. Right now, I move to the third option. I'm going to analyze descriptive statistics. Explore, yeah. So before that cross step, I'm going to cross step. Where we can, when we can use the cross step? Any idea? When we can use the cross step? One category. Compare to two variable, two. Comparing two categorical variables. Exactly. So if you have the two categorical variable, we can go with the cross step. See here, I'm picking the cross step. Um. So which of the data is more suitable for doing a cross step? Tiny gender. Gender and locality. Gender and co. Uh, Qualification. Locality. Yeah, that's okay. I'm putting the gender and locality. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so if I go with the exact, we may get the, this. All things not needed. Exact is not needed. Go with the statistics. Um, even the sky square, we can adapt it, but um, is not needed. I'm just skipping. Then if you go with the cells, you are getting the observed default. Better to go with percentage. You may you need a percentage of row, column, and total. Suppose you want to give the percentage analysis. You can check this one: row, column, and total. Click continue. Click continue. Click continue. Then other things not needed. Just click OK. Once you click OK, you are getting the answer. How many others get the answer? Those who are reaching this level, type type in the O in the chat box. Those who are reaching level, you can type yeah. Jayanna, very good. Kari Kumar, Pranjee, Rajinja, very good, very good. So it seems the people are working a lot. Good, good, good. Mahmud, Swadhi, yes. Right, others, please. Uh, I request all to involved in this. Then only you can lead. Uh, or it is with or depends on anyone. You can do further your data analysis. Yes. Uh, excuse me, sir. Can you please yeah. repeat it, eight, please? Okay, okay. So kindly see analyze descriptive statistics, cross step. For doing a cross step, we need a two variable. Uh, the variable should be a category name. Therefore, I am keeping the gender as a row, column as a locality. Then go with the cells. In the cells select the percentage, all the percentage, and click continue, and click OK. Once you click OK, the second table take a consideration. See here, uh, 
uh, the count what is the count what is the, this represent 117 represent any idea what is 117 represent what is number one, of uh, male sample cells yeah yes okay that is frequency only what is the represent number of males locality of, uh, one and two yeah, yeah. yeah. both locality okay, number of uh, uh, urban uh, sorry rural males urban males exactly mm -hmm. correct exactly correct so for example i am taking one is a rural two is a urban 117 students 117 male students are rural background 80 students 80 male students are from the urban background you got clear so that is why the female what is the percentage what is the percentage what is the percentage for the 197 percentage 559.4 40.6 percentage for the gender the same way uh, locality this for the total percentage which percentage you want you can use this percentage right i move to the, the next level i think there is no problem at all in this do you have any doubt in this do you have any no, doubt? sir uh, how to interpret that uh, percentage within gender percentage within locality i'm not I'm, actually here what are they doing this not need for interpretation we need only frequency here what is the percentage represent out of 197 so only they take in consideration only the 190 in the male in the gender male and female 107 286 see here 107 and 286 as a male locality in the rural their percentage is 59.4 the same manner the uh what is that uh, uh this is called uh, urban urban male and female this is a percentage this for the locality based like they're given the separate separate percentage um to separately is better to consideration of the total whole whole because then only you can check the 19.7 18.3 uh, it means that most of the females, uh, most of the students are female only compared to the male. Male samples only 97, females are 803. Most of the uh, samples from the uh, female side only. If you see from the, the data sets, we can easily understand only 19.7 percentage from the male side, 80.3 percentage from the female side, uh, total to the 100. This is a column total represent the, the column total represent the uh, urban, uh, rural, 40.3 is a rural. 59.7 is the urban. So this is a column represent locality, uh, row represent a gender. So based on which things you are keeping here as a row and column, it may be vary. So normally we are not writing uh, this interpretation. We are using for doing chi square test only this kind of cross tab options. If you need, you can use it. Okay. Next time, moving to the, the descriptive statistics, the explore. Yes. When we can use the explore? When we can do a explore, when we do a explore. For continuous and categorical variable. Exactly, exactly. Continuous and categorical variable. Uh, there only I'm going to do a all kind of, uh, what is the normal, some people are asking the normal, you know, for checking the normality, you can use this explore option for using the explore options. But now I'm not going with any kind of uh, categorical variable. I'm just going with only the dependent variable. What is my dependent variable? In this context, for example, I'm taking the uh, all the steady variable as a different variable, steady habits I'm putting inside. Steady habits. Otherwise, one thing I'll do, I put as a intelligence. I'm keeping as an intelligent first. I'm keeping as an intelligence. In the intelligence as a dependent, I'm not keeping any kind of <coughs> categorical variable as a factor list. If you need it, you can keep it. For example, I want to go with the male and female. So male separately intelligence result. Female separately result, if you need, you can go with this. But now I don't like it. I want to get the total. That's why I'm keeping like this. Um, so first, we have to keep the intelligent list. This should be a, cat a continuous nature. Then click the statistics. Click the descriptives. Automatically, the description is there. Uh, Harish Kumar, factor is nothing but male and female. Is if you want, I will do that one. So see here. How many factors in the gender? Two factors. Male is a one factor, female is a factor. That is called categorical variable. Even when doing the ANOVA also, this kind of factor uh, name may, may come in the while doing ANOVA also. Factor list is nothing but a categorical variable. Factor represents a categorical. So you can keep the gender. Now you're keeping the gender for uh, um, demo purpose. Keeping the statistics, click the descriptives. What it comes, the result may come different. One is male separately. Female separately may comes. That is why. Then I'm clicking the plots. Plot, you can go with the histogram, the normality. So these are three graphs is representing the, we can easily check the normality. 
once we the normal day plots automatically there is a case results may comes from this we can do it pradeepika there is a case case test so if it possible i will do tomorrow session if it time possible because our uh, what is that in our study there is no parametric statistics is non parametric statistics we are focusing only the parametric only if it time possible i may focusing tomorrow okay now in the descriptive stem and leaf histogram normality plot please kindly check for checking the normality this is the main thing normality plot and test click this one and click continue and click okay once you click okay you are getting the the table results how many of the receive the table how many they get the re results kindly see yes yes so kindly kindly type your chat box those who are reach this level yes thank you now yeah thank you thank you now see here luna fan cortos is well yeah now see here you are getting the two output what are the output male female why you are getting the two output why the two outputs may comes what is the reason because you are keeping as a factor factor as a gender therefore the male report separately comes female report is comes separately now the mean scores of male 178 then five what is the five trimmed uh, any idea five trimmed mean it means that the five percent of lowest score five percent of highest scores may remove this like outer layer so the better we can remove the outer layer with this kind of trimmed option but uh, we could not be come for under percent conclusion that in the five percent trimmed uh, the all the outlays may remove so we cannot come for any conclusions after trimmed this and mean normally we are not using the trimmed mean if you need you can use it then median variance standard deviation minimum mans inter quarter range skewness cutoff group of things we know then i am coming down i am coming down this is a table see here this is a table test of normality so this set test we can check the normality whether it is satisfying the normality or non normality so this is kolmar kolmar grow is for the non parametric Uh, shabira built for the parametric so we have to check the shabira built test only the results the statistics uh, results 0.959 but we can check with the significant value what is the significant value just i am opening the ppt for doing the interpretation you may understand i am opening the because the people saying the confusion about the uh, normality that's why i am opening this slides kindly see i am opening the normality yes yes so there is a two test we can do for the normality one is called kolmar grow simurnov test kes test uh, generally we may use that this called it may lies in the non uh, non parametric uh, for doing any kind of continuous data you can adopt the sabira uh, sabira wilk test is a parametric uh, for doing any high, any kind of hypothesis system we have to find the high null hypothesis so in this context what is your hypothesis what is your null hypothesis the sample was drawn from the normal distribution it's like a equal okay so if you taking consideration is normal is called as a null hypothesis so in the null hypothesis for testing a normality the null hypothesis we can take it consideration is same the sample was drawn from the normal distribution what is the alternative hypothesis for this the sample was not drawn from the normal distribution this is an uh, alternate hypothesis then how we can check with the results see here this is an interpretation kindly take the screenshot if the p value is less than 0.05 level or 0.01 level based on the level of significant level of confidence you can select it suppose i am going with the level of significance 0.05 level you can compare with 0.05 level with your probability value p value if p value is less than 0.05 it's called null hypothesis rejected null hypothesis is rejected it means that your distribution is not normal if the null hypothesis are rejected suppose if p value is greater than 0.05 it's called not significant not significant represent both the groups are same it's like a normal your null hypothesis should be not rejected we can accept as it is as a null hypothesis therefore your data set is to be normal distributed so this is the interpretations so how we can come for conclusion if the p value is greater than 0.05 only it's called normality yeah so i am talking about stem also stem leaf also i will tell the stem leaf also okay now i hope you don't have doubt in this uh, just uh, sir 
yes in yes. a previous slide uh, there is a one note uh, that a test uh, should be sample size should be greater than 50 and it could be easily uh, as yeah, yeah. that means what sir actually it's more appropriate for the less than 50 sample but we can use this sample size large in 2000 also we can use this one okay this is a statistics of people are giving some kind of comments and that's why i'm keeping here uh, even we can use this uh, sabira will test less than 50 or more than 2000 also we can use it so okay till uh, till 2000 uh, sample yeah, yeah, size more, we can use yeah, yeah 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 okay sir thank you okay just i'm coming back to the uh, our data please uh, I'm doing the once again uh, with another data set, then you can understand because in this data set, you may have a lot of confusion. I'm going with a small data sets uh, because here a lot of data, a thousand data is there. That's why you may have the confusion. Just I'm going with uh, another data which having the very small data I'm opening. Uh, so this data is not available in your end. Please wait for, yeah. I'm selecting the Excel. I'm setting the data sets. Uh, I'm keeping the uh, demo, yes. See here, this is a very small file for demonstration I'm keeping. Uh, gender, height, weight. So in this gender is a categorical variable. Height and weight is a continuous variable. Now I'm going to do a same explore test. I'm clicking the analyze. I'm going the descriptives. I'm clicking the cross tab, sorry, explore. Um, then which things I had to keep in the dependent list, can you tell? Can I keep it the height in the different list? Can I keep it height? Yes. yes can, sir. I, can I keep the weight is a factor list? Can I give? Can I put it? No, sir. No, no. sir. Why? 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 It should be categorical. Exactly. Only exactly. categorical variable. That is correct. Even if you are putting weight also, the answer may come. You got clear. The answer may come. That is why as a researcher, we have to check whether we are putting, we are giving the proper input. Now I'm keeping only the dependent, I'm not keeping any kind of uh, gender, I'm not keeping any kind of categorical variable. Uh, I'm keeping only one variable as a height, then I'm going to be a statistics without the categorical variable, then continue. I'm clicking the plots, I'm clicking the histogram and normality, click continue. Now the results may come, I'm click OK. Now see the results. Now see the results. This is a results. This is for the total sample, not for the male and female. This is a general total sample. So now, okay. Now see the Colmar test. Which things we have to select? Which accept test? null hypothesis? Sabira Wilk we have to select. Okay. What is the significant value? What is the significant value here? 0. 0.568. What it means? It is above the 0 0.05 okay therefore p value is greater than 0 0.05 it means what the null hypothesis not, not, significant. Uh, not significant what is the our null hypothesis what is the null hypothesis it's normally distributed sir exactly so therefore you can go with the parameter statistics here after you got clear so this way we have to check the normality now in the diagram wise i'm going to explain the histogram also, this looks like if you draw the normal probability somewhat it will be matching with the normality. But the main image, uh, this is called normal PQ plot, which is very much important. Uh, how we can come for the conclusion about the normality? One is called uh, the Shibara uh, well, uh, works test. The second one is this one, the normal QQ plot. If the data, see here, there is a diagonal line, there is a diagonal line, the data is and very near to the is very near to the the line the very near to the diagonal line it means that your data is satisfying the normality so in this diagram it is somewhat very near to the the diagonal line i hope you are seeing this this is called normal QQ plot is better you can use this kind of diagram in your dissertation or thesis because from this we can the investigator sorry the evaluator can understand oh you are you are, did the normality test and all because the people most of the this is not doing the normality test if you are using this diagram is too good so the normality how we can check in the sense there is a diagonal line if the all the data so sets is very near to the the uh, diagonal line then it's called normal it's called normality it's satisfying normality then one more question arise from the stem so there is a question from stem and leaf i'm coming to the stem and leaf so what is the stem and leaf? 
the stem and leaf actually i am using the height height is a centimeter therefore the height is centimeter 143 to uh, 160 168 there is a range uh, the stem what is the stem represent see here the stem the first two digit the, i think 140 the number the first lowest number is 143 therefore what is the stem is taking as a 14 what is my leaf 143 so how many times 143 in the sense only one time now the 14 with the uh, for 145 146 147 148 149 it comes only one time see here 145 145 146 146 147 147 like that if you are counting the number of leaf the number of leaf is called frequency it means that 145 to 149 there is a fine data is available in the data set now the 15 is started 151 one times 152 two times 154 two times See, because the four is two times therefore 154 two times uh, how many frequency how many leaves are there how many leaves therefore four leaves therefore it comes now anyone can highlight this one 1 156 157 156 156 156 one time 157 two times 159 one times exactly how many frequency how many frequencies four, four leaves Oh, how we can check the frequency from the leaf only from the leaf only so this is we can check the outer layer also sometimes there is a 13 1 3 only one it means that only one score is more than 13 it not be accepted we can remove the outer layers we can cross check and normally for the normality what it happen that center the center no like 15 15 this center it should be high high frequency high frequency so from this also we can check whether it may satisfy the normality then what is that this one 165 anyone can give this 658 6.58 1651 2 uh, one time and 168 one time oh so number of frequency two yeah exactly so i hope now we are get the ente clarity uh, yeah now this is a box plot what is a box plot so this is a box plot you knows the box plot curve just i'm Quadrate. coming with the ppt yeah just i'm opening my ppt then you can understand the box plot yeah this is a box plot graph uh, this is called uh, highest value this is called uh, smallest value uh, this one is called q1 25th percentage this is called as a q2 second uh, uh, so this is called the third quarter this is called third quarter this the middle one is called second quarter uh, this things you know how to do the formula normally the logic to the uh, this box plot graph like this only uh, median q1 first quarter q2 the third quarter there is a difference uh, uh, between this first quarter and the minimum value should be 1.5 iqr iqr represent the inter quarter range that is nothing but q3 minus q1 the q3 minus q1 is called inter quarter range uh, the maximum of the minimum score the left side it's 1.5 times of iqr only the above the 1.5 iqr we may treat it as an outlier so for this graph there is a two outliers other we have to eliminate otherwise our data should may be influence match the same way the q3 the right side also q3 plus iq 1.5 times of iqr the above the scores we may treat it as a outliers outliers outlier so in this context uh, in this particular diagram we don't have outliers see here there is no outliers so so this is called q this is center line is called q2 this is called q1 uh, this is called q3 this is called minimum value maximum value therefore there is no outliers may arise here that's why we can keep it the graph and this graph also see here look like a symmetric because it centrally is lying so this also same area the above also same uh, what is the range of uh, spaces down also same range of spaces so it's satisfying the normality i hope now we understand the what is my normality hari kumar uh, uh, the stem leaf uh, is nothing but our data our data how it distributing how it distributing for this we are using this kind of stem calculation see here um, this like a frequency only normally we are checking the how many 143 how many 150 145 how many 146 is there no this is like a frequency analysis only but the frequency analysis is checking the stem with the leaf stem means for example 146 is my score 14 is a stem the sixth the last number is a leaf if you are taking so 147 14 is a stem leaf is a seventh 
that the, in this manner he has shown that how many 143 is there how many 145 is there one how many 140 uh, to 152 is there how many 151 is there for this kind of stem leaf graph they are using it's not compulsive to adopt it and the main thing how we can check the normality particularly in the center see the center uh, the center normal the center frequency should be high in nature uh, we may get this some kind of normality can i do once again with the normality test see here i'm going with the descriptive i'm going to explore i'm clicking the weight also I'm clicking the weight. I'm removing the height now. I'm clicking the weight. I'm clicking the plots, uh, normality plots. Now you can give the interpretation. Please, I request you give the interpretation. I give the interpretation. What is this? It's a normality or non normality? Normally distributed. It's normally distributed. Yeah, yes. normal distribution. Exactly. Sometimes, uh, even the Sabira week test is showing the. Uh, what is the non-normality also? What we can do, we can cross check with the skewness kurtosis. I'm talking about one z score that also I may focus into you later. Uh, now the histogram. What is the leaf? Now we are getting the leaf. What is the 4.8 represent? What is 4.8 represent? 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 53. How many 54 are there? How many 54 are there? 3, 3, 3, 3 54. How many 56 are there? How many 56? 256. Yeah. yeah. How many 72s are there? How many 72? 172. One. Oh, yes, exactly. Now, now the QQ plus. See the QQ plus. So most of the data is very near to the normal or to the diagonal. Therefore, this diagram also is showing. Then this also. Then observe this also. There is no outlier. There is no outlier. Now I'm going to 1,000 sample. I'm going a little fast, please. Uh, I hope now you understand that I'm skipping. I'm going to the descriptive. Um, I'm going to other data sets. There is a 1,000 data sets we have, no? Yeah. So we have the 1,000. Uh, these things I'm going to generate. I'm going to the descriptives. I'm going to the descriptives. I'm keeping the all the not descriptive, sorry. Where we can go? Explore. Okay. In the explore, I'm keeping the all uh, steady habits, achievements. So I'm keeping the three variables the continuous variable uh, statistics descriptive plots what are the plots we have to check yeah then click ok and click ok please uh, how many of them did this one those are doing these things you can give the interpretation also yes now see here uh, yeah yes how many of them got this report how many of them got this report? This like a descriptive. You can use the same descriptive for writing in the report. Now, kindly give that answer. Whether the normality is satisfying? Not normally distributed. Not normally distributed. Exactly, it's not normally distributed. But based on this Sabira build test. But uh, even if you are not satisfied, also because we are cutting thousand sample, how we can go with uh, always a non-probability, non-parametric? What we have to do? There is an another checking. See here, there is a, another method I am telling. You are getting the skewness value. What is the skewness value? In the case of uh, near to zero, minus uh, point. It's, yeah, it's very near to the zero. zero five, six. It's very near to the zero. Therefore, what it means? It's normality. But some data may be scattered. That's why this kind of uh, response may comes. The next thing uh, I can check. I will tell one more formula. There is a formula for exit score of skewness and kurtosis. What is the formula in the sense? Uh, the statistics value of skewness divided by the standard error. So what is the skewness value in this context? What is the skewness value? Kindly do someone's and do the calculation. 0 0.056. 0 0.056 divided by standard error. What is the standard error of skewness? 0 0.077. Yeah, so anyone can divide it. 0 point, so 0 point, 0 point 0 0.056 divided by uh, 0 0.77. What it answer? 0. Point minus 0. 0.7272. 0. 7272. Yeah. So there is a one more interpretation. You can keep in the mind this interpretation. But what is the interpretation? Since, yeah, this is the main interpretations. Your z score of this skewness and kurtosis value, the span plus or minus 1.96 acceptable. Plus or minus plus or minus 1.96 acceptable. But for us, we are getting 0 0.072. Therefore, it's satisfying. It is satisfying the, it is satisfying the, this span. It is satisfying the normal. 
it is satisfying the normality therefore you can go with the parameter statistics it got clear suppose even sometimes the sabira will test it's not highlighting that uh, the p value is less than 0.05 you are come for conclusion that is it's not para it's non non parametric sorry no no it's not a non probability sampling uh, like this so not non probability is not satisfying the normal probability therefore we are come for another conclusion therefore better you can check with this formula what is the formula just i am highlighting once again in this you can divide the the skewness value divided by the standard error the similarly the kurtosis value anyone can do the kurtosis what is the kurtosis value in this kurtosis value is 0.663 divided by divided by 0. 0.155 0. 0.155 what is the answer what is the answer 4.277 minus yeah, so, 4.2 Minus four point two, but in this cutters is not satisfying the one point. The cutters is not satisfying the the cutters is not satisfying the span. Therefore, even the skewness satisfied, the cutters is not satisfying. Therefore, you could not be go with intelligent as a non parameter. What is that parameter? It got clear. So because there is a problem with the skewness. Now can come, come to the steady habits. What is the steady habits? Can you check the skewness value of steady habits? Steadiness value of steadiness point two four three. Divided by zero point seven seven, so it comes. It comes three point one five. Therefore, it not also come under the the what is that? Uh, uh, pro, the, non non probability. What is that? So normal probability. Curve. So now I come to the achievement. So we can come for achievement. Any one we can check any skewness kurtosis. So from this we can easily to come further. So point one two zero divided by point zero seven seven. One point five five. Satisfied. So come to the case of kurtosis. Can you check the kurtosis? Two seven zero divided by point one five five. What it comes? What it comes? One point seven four. Therefore, only the achievement. Only the achievement is satisfying the. Only the achievement is satisfying the normal. Both, both, both the skewness and the kurtosis. Yeah, both. Yes. Therefore, we can go with the normality test. Now, Na, what is that? Uh, Non-parametric tests only for the inter, only for the achievement, not for the intelligence study guys based on the results. Now, I will I will highlight with this uh, diagram itself. See here, see here. This for the uh, the QQ plot uh, of the what is this QQ plot of the uh, intelligence. This for the intelligence. Just you can check intelligence. This is for the QQ plot of the uh, steady habits. This is for the QQ plot of the intelligence. See here, achievement. Sorry, achievement. So you are seeing that all the data. So some of the data it should be going here and there, but. Particularly, this achievement is somewhat very near to that. Somewhat very near to the, very near compared to the other graph. See here, I am showing the other one. I am showing the other one. Here, the data, the data sets so more high. The data sets are so high. But see here, lot of scores, lot of scores, lot of scores is going above, going more above. But in this context, only few scores are going above. If you count one, uh, two, three, the numbers you can count the numbers, five, six, only six numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's like a at least six or seven numbers is outlined in the video. But if you see here, if you count the numbers outside the diagonal, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, then here more than twenty. In this more than 20 more than 40 okay so now here one two so it more than 50 samples may go here and there that is why the normality is not satisfying better you can check the normality uh, with uh, this colmar test or shimar uh, no. so where is that answer yeah it comes now yeah from the shabira will test you can be find out the normal but in this context both the three is not satisfying the normality that is the issue uh, because uh, I type the data in a random base. I'm not doing exactly the data. That is why this kind of issues come. So I'm coming for the conclusion. I hope now we are getting, I share the PPT also. 
for checking crash check i'm going to compile it uh, descriptive statistics uh, these are the interpretation you know skewness and kurtosis and all just i'm coming back uh, the normal property plot we can go with this kind of uh, interpretation with this test uh, one is called uh, case test other one is called sabira will test this for the test of normality whether we can accept the null hypothesis and reject the null hypothesis based on this then this is for the path this path also i am sharing to you uh, this is called interpretation see here some interpretation i'm giving suppose the data distributed like this 100 percent the q the diagonal only the data may lies if the symmetric little fat little fat but it's a symmetric in the sense only the the uh, so starting point end point only this data may be scattered uh, in a different manner if it comes a positive skew the data like a curve based like a parabola based uh, if it negative the curve may come like this so i'm sharing this ppt you can check whether the qq flats comes you can come for conclusion whether it comes a positive skew or negative skew these are the sum of the qq plus diagram uh, Sir, when we will go for the Colma, uh, that, that's why we, uh, it's like a non-parametric. So if um, even if the satisfying the, in the Samira test, it's satisfying, it's not satisfying the normality, even the non-parametric also not satisfying. Okay. Um, yeah, of course, if your uh, Zainab Zen is correct, if you're adapting the non-probability sampling, like convenience sampling or any other sampling, you can go with uh, Colma Gross. Um, if you're adopting a uh, probability sampling, you can go with uh, Shibara test, that is better. So based on the sampling method only, you can decide it. Uh, then only one, um, only one, now it's exactly one o'clock, only one thing is remaining. Uh, the people's having the conditions that, uh, how we can go with, uh, uh, convert the continuous data into a categorical. For example, you want to know how many, uh, so how many students are low achiever how many students are moderate achiever how many students are the high achiever how we can convert the uh, grouping data so like a continuous data into a uh, categorical data so only two minutes i may highlight it uh, in this context study habits achievement and intelligence here uh, cat uh, continuous data i'm going to convert this continuous data into a categorical with the use of the format of uh, i uh, what is that that is called as the uh, ordinary data so how we can change this ordinary data i'm doing the demonstration can you see here uh, for converting this one we have to go with the transform i'm going to convert because i'm going to transforming continuous data into categorical this is normally we are using suppose you are doing some kind of attitude analysis we may highlight that whether how many low attitude moderate attitude high level attitude for this we can adopt this kind of techniques transform there's an option called visual bending click the visual bending and select the uh, scaling variable. What is my scaling variable? Like uh, continuous variable, steady habits. Click the uh, steady habits and uh, click continue. Once you click continue. So within five minutes, I can finish, please. Okay, please, I request all to mute. Um, I'm going to highlight how to convert a continuous data in a categorical, like a nominal mode. Uh, once again, I do the demonstration. So I like to, I intend to change steady habits continuous to categorical, like low, moderate, high. What I'm going to do, go with the transform, visual bending. There I'm selecting the steady habits because I, I like to change this one only. Click the continue. Then I'm going to change the name of the variable, steady habits bind. Steady habits bind or ordinal. Steady habits ordinal. I'm changing as an ordinal. I'm changing as an ordinal. I'm converting the continuous to ordinal. Then see here, this is called data distribution. Now you are seeing the data distribution as a graph. Uh, you know how to categorize the group, like uh, you know the formula mean plus or minus standard deviation. I hope you all know the formula mean plus or minus standard deviations. Um, one second, because I'm transform, visual bending, select the steady habits, then click continue. Uh, give the, I'm giving you the steady habits. Steady habits being the other way is steady habits ordinal. Uh, there is a make cut points. Click the make cut points and select the cut points plus or minus one standard. It's nothing but a normal probability curve. We are going to divide the region plus one sigma region plus two sigma region. Is nothing but uh, when you if you want to divide the cat continuous variable into categorical variable, we can use the formula mean plus or minus standard division. Mean plus standard division is called high group. Mean minus standard division for the low group. So I'm going to divide the 
the entire uh, study habits in tier three classification in low study habits, moderate level high study habits, high level study habits. For this, I'm using this formula plus or minus standard deviation. I am applying it. Once you're applying it, you are getting the three lines. See here, first line, second line, third line. The central line is called Q2, median. We don't need a median. Therefore, keep the cursor in the center and track it out, track it out. So now we are getting the only two region only. This is called low part. This is called moderate. The above the, the green color is called high level. Now automatically it comes the level. 172 is for the low score. So 172 less is called low group. Uh, 172 to 234 is called moderate group. Then uh, moderate. Then above the 232 is called high group. So like that I'm defining the name. After defining the name and click OK. Once I click OK, click OK. Now see here my graph. So now in my data sets, you are getting the different. Now you are getting the study habits, see here. Moderate, 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 high, high, high. How it comes? Automatically, I'm changing the study habits, continuous data into a categorical. If you click the variable, you are seeing the ordinal. Why is ordinal? Any idea? Anyone can tell? What is an ordinal? Why is comes an ordinal? Grouping is there, categories there. I am grouping it. That's why it's come as an ordinal. Suppose I want to know number of uh, number of low, number of uh, high, number of uh, moderate. What you can do after changing? Go with analyze, descriptive. We know the frequency. In the frequency, what you have to do? We are converting the ordinal data now. That input you can give it. Only that input and click OK. Now we are getting the output like this. Now. Out of uh, 1,000 samples, 147 samples are low group, 657 samples are moderate group, 196 samples for the high group. So thank you so much.